हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर फरीन एंड लेट्स डू अ रैपिड रिवीजन ऑफ द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ पेल्विक ऑर्गन प्रोलैप्स सो एनी मैनेजमेंट स्टार्ट्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल विद द कंजर्वेटिव मैनेजमेंट एंड इन दैट आल्सो वी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल प्रिस्क्राइब लाइफस्टाइल मॉडिफिकेशन वेयर वी आस्क द पेशेंट टू रिड्यूस वेट स्टॉप स्मोकिंग ईट हेल्दी डाइट एंड नॉट टू लिफ्ट हैवी वेट फॉलोड बाय दैट वी टेल पेशेंट्स टू डू कीगल एक्सरसाइजेस सो दीस आर पेरिनल एक्सरसाइजेस व्हिच स्ट्रेंथन द पेल्विक फ्लो मसल्स and the patient is asked to do it in a set of 8 three times in a day it is to be done for 3 months and it should be supervised by a physiotherapist third are the pessaries pessaries are nothing but the space occupying devices they are fitted into the vagina and they support the prolapse part they are generally used for type 2 to type 4 prolapse but pessaries they are used for patients who are not suitable for surgery or who refuse surgery pregnant women with prolapse who cannot be operated at the time of the pregnancy and women who have not completed their family all right so pessary is the most common pessary is the gelhorn pessary it comes like this so this is the vagina and it is fitted into the vagina like this another is the donut pessary and again we can see that it has it is inside the vagina and it supports the anterior and the posterior vaginal wall now coming to surgery surgeries for prolapse depend upon the type of the prolapse and the age of the prolapse so what do we mean by the type of the prolapse well type it can be an anterior wall prolapse all right or it can be a posterior wall prolapse or it can be a central uterovaginal prolapse uv prolapse all right depending upon the age the patient can either be in the reproductive age group right or the patient can be post menopausal so we we are going to discuss about them each one by one starting with the type of prolapse now anterior vaginal wall prolapse so what is there in the anterior vaginal wall in the anterior vaginal wall we have the bladder and the urethra and in the posterior wall lies over here the rectum so if it is the anterior vaginal wall if the upper 2/3 is prolapsing which is the bladder it is known as the cystostheme and if the lower 1/3 is prolapsing which is known as the urethroceme so the repair for this anterior vaginal wall prolapse is known as the anterior colporaphy all right so what do we do is that this we can see that this is the anterior vaginal wall and it has weakened and that is how the bladder is pushing into the anterior vaginal wall see so what do we do that we enter from here we push back the prolapsed organ and we strengthen this part we strengthen this area so that the anterior vaginal wall is supported and the bladder and the urethra are pushed up and again this is known as what anterior colporaphy similarly the um, surgery for the posterior vaginal wall prolapse is known as a posterior colporaphy now again it can be in the upper one third which is the endoseal what is endoseal it is nothing but the intestine which is prolapsing all right so the correction for the surgery is known as the mccall's caldoplasty and if the posterior vaginal wall the lower two third is prolapsing then it is a rectoseal and it is known as the posterior colporaphy all right so over here what will we do that we will strengthen this posterior vaginal wall we will push back the prolapse part as strengthen this so anterior vaginal wall prolapse we do anterior colporaphy right posterior vaginal wall prolapse we do posterior colporaphy both of these if both of these anterior and posterior vaginal wall are prolapsing so then it is known as pelvic floor repair operation okay so these are the few terminologies pelvic floor repair Now the third is the uterine prolapse. So how do we correct it? We do a vaginal hysterectomy. All right. We remove the prolapsed uterus. Now anterior and posterior colporaphy, as we have already discussed, are known as the pelvic floor repair operation. If it is done along with the vaginal hysterectomy, then this is known as a ward mayo hysterectomy. All right. Now what is the order of clamping in a vaginal hysterectomy? So they have asked this many times in the examination. So this is the uterus. All right. and these are the tubes the ovary is here here we have the uterine artery okay and then we have the cardinal or the macrinaut ligament and at the back we have the uterosacral ligament so if we are approaching from the vagina if we are approaching from the vagina 
Then first of all, what will be cut? We'll cut the uterosacral ligament, followed by the cardinal or the macronaut ligament, the same, followed by the uterine artery, and then the tubovarian ligament. But if we were to approach from the abdominal side, then again the order will be reversed. So first will be tubovarian, followed by the uterine, then the cardinal, and then the uterosacral ligament. Now surgeries for prolapse as per the age. So it can be either a postmenopausal woman or a young woman. In postmenopausal women, either it can be a uterovaginal prolapse or it can be a vault prolapse. What do we mean by a vault prolapse? This is the vault, which means that these women have already had the uterus removed and only the vagina is left. So the top of the vagina is known as the vault. This is known as the vault, and this can also prolapse. All right. So the person will require a second operation, and this is known as a vault prolapse operation. Okay. So let's start with the Uh, surgeries in the postmenopausal age group. So, if it's a uterovaginal prolapse, we can always offer pessaries to women. Remember, pessaries are offered from stage two to stage four prolapse, right? We can offer vaginal hysterectomy, which is a definite operation. Now, if the patient is very old, frail, and she is not suitable for surgery, or if the patient refuses surgery, then this is another operation which is known as a Leifold scopoclysis. So what do we do is that we approximate the anterior and the posterior vaginal wall and we shut the entrance of the vagina. Okay? So it is generally done for women who are not sexually active and who are not fit for extensive surgery. What do we do if it's a vault prolapse? Okay? So the patient is now going to require a second operation, right? She has already had the uterus removed prior. So vault prolapse operation can either be done abdominally. Okay? or it can be done vaginally right so let's discuss first the abdominal operation abdominal operation is known as the abdominal sacrocolpopexy colpo means vagina right here i would also like to tell you the term histro if it comes histo means the womb or the uterus okay so abdominal sacrocolpopexy sacro means the sacrum right and colpo means the vagina So what are we doing? We are attaching the top of the vagina, which is also known as the vault, to the sacrum with the help of this mesh, as you can see over here, so that it will keep the vault pulled up. So it's an abdominal operation. It is preferred in sexually active females, and the vault is attached to the sacrum through synthetic mesh. The operating time somehow is more, and uh, there are less chances of recurrence because we're using a mesh and. Uh, it's a very strong mesh which is being used so again the chances of recurrence will be less there will be less chances of dyspareunia now why are there less chances of dyspareunia because we are it's an abdominal operation and it is we are not going to operate in this area in the vaginal area so it is not going to narrow this vagina right we are just pulling the top of the vagina so therefore the patient is not going to have dyspareunia all right and there are less chances of incontinence okay Now another is the sacrospinous fixation. So as the name suggests, we are fixing the wall to the spinous ligament. So here is the ischial spine. All right, this is the ischial spine. This is your prolapsed wall. This is your prolapsed wall, and this is your ischial spine. So we are lifting the prolapsed wall and we are attaching it to the ischial spine over here. Okay. So what will be the advantages of the surgery since it is done vaginally so the time of operation will be less okay the recovery time will be faster the route is vaginal but it is preferred in sexually inactive females because what it is going to do since it's a vaginal operation so it is going to narrow the vagina all right and the patient will have dyspareunia The vault is attached to the sacrospinous ligament, as already discussed, and there are more chances of recurrence, dyspareunia, and incontinence. So again, to compare both of them, abdominal and the sacrospinous fixation, I put the chart again over here. Coming to young women, okay? So in young women, the patient can either be a nulli paris or she can be a multi paris. Okay? So to start with the nulli paris women, pessary is always an option for everyone. Sacro histopexy. What does histo mean? Histo means womb. So now we are attaching the womb to the sacrum. All right. So this is the sacro histopexy. Again, it is done with the help of a mesh. Now comes the sling surgeries. So sling surgeries again, it can be anterior wall sling, it can be a posterior wall sling, or it can be a composite sling. 
okay let's discuss them one by one so in anterior sling it is known as the purandre operation what do we do that we take the anterior part of the isthmus we take a mercelin tape okay the tape is known as mercelin tape and we attach it to the anterior part of the rectus over here okay they can also give an image like this in the examination they have asked in the inict that which is this operation so we can see that this is the anterior part of the isthmus the tape is passing through the anterior part and it is being attached to the rectus okay so this is the purandre operation and this is the anterior sling operation so uh, what can be the side effects of this there can be a risk of enteroceal formation what do we mean by enteroceal enteroceal is the intestine which is prolapsing now imagine that this is the uterus this was the uterus over here all right and we have we are trying to pull the uterus in the front right the uterus is being pulled in the front so the intestine which was lying here all of the intestine which was lying here the gap has been created and the intestine can prolapse okay so therefore there is increased risk of enteroceal formation what is the prerequisite for this for the prerequisite is since we are attaching the tape to the rectus muscle so the rectus muscle tone should be good the tape can be damaged in a subsequent cesarean operation if we do a put a cut over here right and again there can be risk of bowel loop entrapment in between the uterus and the anterior abdominal wall over here and uh, then comes the posterior sling posterior sling is also known as the shirodhaka sling so there we were attaching the anterior part of the isthmus to the rectus here we are attaching the posterior part of the isthmus to the sacral ligament okay so ligaments of the sacrum and it has better success rate than the anterior sling but this is a more complex operation and there are more complications so there can be obstruction to the sigmoid colon there can be injuries to the mesenteric vessels genito femoral nerve injury is very common and there can be ureteric injuries all right coming to the third the third is the virkut operation it combines both the anterior and the posterior sling so on the right side is the shirodhkar we can see over here that this is the posterior sling on the right side and on the left side it is the anterior sling which is the purandre okay so now let's discuss the operations done in a multiparous woman okay so for a multiparous woman the operation's name is known as the for the girls operation it is done only when the uterus cervical length is increased the child bearing has been completed so what do we do over here that we dilate the cervix we do dnc why do we do dnc because we should be sure that there is no uterine pathology okay then we cut the cervix from here okay we cut the cervix and these are the cardinal ligaments we bring them in the front of the amputated cervix and then we stand in the anterior and the posterior vaginal wall all right this for the girls operation is also known is the same as the manchester operation okay now what is the shirodhkar modification for for the girls operation in that the cervical amputation is not done and rest all the steps are same so for the girls manchester they are the same thing and what is the shirodhkar modification for for the girls operation that the cervical amputation is not done okay so let's summarize all of it in a postmenopausal woman if she is having a uterovaginal prolapse then what are the options lay forth scolpoclysis and vaginal hysterectomy if it's a wall prolapse then abdominal sacrocolpopexy right or vaginally sacrospinous fixation if it's a nulliparous woman then we go for sacro hysteropexy all right or sling surgeries in sling we have anterior which is the purandre posterior which is the shirodhkar and composite which is the virkut sling right multiparous what do we do for the girls operation okay again if the family is complete then she can go for a vaginal hysterectomy and for the girls and manchester they are the same thing right okay so this was all about management of prolapse thank you so much